Yeah. Um, I want to go on tour again, but it didn't work out. But, but he went on tour a couple of times that I thought about him because, like, the past like five years, the favorite is just to just go take a fight. Well, that's that was my that was my job. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, those were always I'd keep for myself. That's the other thing. That's the Bruce and my pal. Yeah. How's it going? Good. And you? Yeah, I'm doing well. I buy for this King Squadron. Yeah. I've got, I've got two fighters that are like in that under 400 just trying to get a house. 15 initial types. You know, just, just like, Going on. A couple of things. A couple of things. A couple of things. A couple of things. A couple of Awesome. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's 11 o'clock. We had an appointment at 11 o'clock. So, hey, let's get rocking and rolling here. So, and welcome to everybody online. You're behind me. So, you'll have to speak up loudly today so we can all hear you. And I don't forget that they're back there. So, somebody's got to be the eyes. My kids grew up, so the eyes in the back of my head finally closed. <laughs> so don't don't tell my grandkids that, but it happened. So, so how's your week going? It's Wednesday. Bye -bye. It's the end of the month. Join me, guys. Take yourselves off and mute. I don't care if you got bat growing noise. Just take it off. <laughs> Chime in. Yeah, you know that. Very good. Cool. What's awesome about it? Um, well, our special forces team for sure. It helps us keep accountable, kicking our butts, making business come in. So, got a good house under contract, 11 offers, and have three appointments today. Awesome. That's awesome. Don't you love a stacking appointments in a day like airplanes get ready to take off? <laughs> Isn't that fun? Man, the energy that it creates is huge. Who else? Shannon. Yes. What's awesome about the week so far? Uh, yeah, it's going to be listing with life today. This morning. That's fabulous. Where's that at? It's in Castle Plains. Cool. Do you want to talk about it real quick? Sure. Since it's, it's uh, brand new. Brand new. Start showing some Friday. Uh, ranch. It's at 620. It's uh, almost 2,000 square feet on the main floor, 2,000 square foot walkout basement. Um, showings are, we've only got like a couple of time slots that are left on Friday. Probably pretty much booked up. So. Books up fast, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and it's, and it's basically the home that just built two years ago. So it's basically my way on a new build at this moment. It's, they just had a situation where they've got to move out of state. So basically getting a new build. Awesome. Congratulations. That's fabulous. Richard, what's awesome today for you? For you should me? find a new word. It sounds like Patrick. Just, uh, <laughs> what's just, amazing? Just trying to keep up. <laughs> Not trying, you are. I am. Yeah, That's right. yeah I try does not exist in our vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, cool. Henry. You know, I would say the, the energy in the office has uh, really elevated my energy, which I didn't think my energy could get any higher than what right? it already it is, <laughs> Apparently, it can go higher <laughs> because uh, I have uh, really just felt uh, a really cool vibe in the office. Uh, you know, the boot camp thing uh, has been awesome. I guess this is way beyond boot camp. Boot camp is for wuss yeah. people. This is <laughs> not for wuss people. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely um, has been great to see everyone in, everyone holding each other accountable, uh, just being responsible for themselves. And I think what we're seeing is the fruits of their labor. You know, when you, uh, it's just like going to the gym. You know, if you go every day and you eat right, you know, you're going to start to see some results. And I think, uh, you know, Kristen's obviously showcasing some results today with just all the things that she has going on. And I've talked to multiple people uh, going through that, and they are just 
Also, it's kind of cool to see everybody on Facebook. All the videos right? and everything. Uh, you know, Andrew was making carbonara. And, uh, Williams telling me the songs that he likes to sing, and uh, I guess I'm going to get to play in the football pool because Madison told me there's some squares up front. So uh, apparently, uh, you know, everyone is really uh, taking hold of what they're learning. So it's awesome. To be yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't you love it when you uh, when you bring somebody in, and then there are people that go, "I can do that," and then they actually do it. And, and then we start to see what comes off of it. It's, you know, it's planting that seed, watch the, the thing take root and start to pop up out of the ground. And uh, there, there are leaves and fruit popping up off of those trees now. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Jamie, you had your hand up. I did. So I had a really great sit down with um, our very own Henry Russell yesterday. Um, and I'm kind of excited today because I'm going to refi my investment property because he got me great rate, great deal. I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah. Save me a lot of money. It's a good thing to save money. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Mary, you got a big smile on your face today. Oh. Um, well, I'm going to be taking my buyers out again this weekend. I got two buyers at the same price point, so that's kind of interesting. They both want Highlands Ranch, so <laughs> we'll be sitting in the same house. That's nice. Um, like Kristen just mentioned, we just spoke in the bathroom, and <laughs> there's only five. Uh, single family homes available right now in Highlands Ranch, which is absolutely insane. Five active Five. listings yeah. in Highlands Ranch. Single but family. she's yeah. going to have a couple more coming up. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, hope. I know. Yeah. Victoria. <laughs> What's fabulous this <laughs> week? She and I are hairs on fire, man. We're just rocking and rolling. Yeah. Taking on like a champion. Thankful for you. Yeah. yeah. Very. Absolutely. Who did I miss? Who else? Debbie, got Debbie, yeah. I've got a, I don't have my video up because I'm not. I am not feeling well today. So, um, we. Uh, I had did the took the 21 day video challenge, and I did a video. I was trying to come up with something, and I did a video of my remodeled bathroom. And when I looked yesterday, I had over 300 views. Wow. Of my bathroom. Nothing wow. really exciting about the video, just my bathroom. That is way cool. Yes. So what you're saying is this stuff actually works. It actually works. Yeah. I've gotten, you know, I've gotten comments, some more than others. So it's a learning experience, but you know, I think it's going to continue to give you know, to to get me people following and saying something. So I think that's awesome. That's great. Good, good, good. So anybody, gratitude for this week. I mean, here it is, January 27th. We're 27 days into a brand new year. Doesn't feel quite as brand new as we had hoped, right? But we're getting closer. So gratitude. I've got one. So all you people that reached out over... All, losing my mom last week was amazing. So, thank you. Who else? I have Mad one. Madison. I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and toot her horn again. But if you're in special forces, you know that I've been tooting her horn a lot. Um, for those of you who are not, though, Brooksy has been like a life change in my business. Um, we definitely have incredible accountability, and we have. You know, so much fun in the office every day. She makes it where it's exciting to get up and go to work every day. And we like to talk about ideas, but we also are able to be really tough on each other and call each other out when we're not doing what we say that we're going to do. And so thank you, Brooksy. I love you. Y'all were here <laughs> even after I left last night. That's hard to do. <laughs> yeah, we were like, what, 530 or something? Yeah, I know. Who else? I got one. Yes. I got a couple. So first one is for you for setting up special forces. Yep. I'm like, I know we're saying a lot of things about it, but seriously, if it wasn't for doing that, I don't know what my business would look like right now. And I'm doing more right now than I would typically do in like a quarter. And so that's massive. And for the first time, it feels like the things that are on my vision board, I, they don't feel so unrealistic. Um, and then the second one is for Henry. He, you know, you're appreciated. 
big time. I mean, anytime you need anything, you just take care of it. I appreciate you stopping what you're doing and coming in and talking to my client and just always being there. It's awesome to have. He even goes and has tea with you at the Brown Palace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, going up to the kids, right? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I'm curious. Like, Who else? There's more. I know there's Cindy. So I, I have to piggyback. I am so grateful for you and that we have, I mean, I came in yesterday and I sat in her office for like 20 minutes because I couldn't find her. I'm like, well, she's going to come back. <laughs> you walk in, you're like, and I just appreciate our conversations at such a high level. You're so incredibly experienced and give such great advice that I I value. And I hope everybody knows what we have here in here. Oh, you're she's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying experienced and not old. <laughs> well, I think we're close to the same. <laughs> Debbie, I have a couple. Go for it. Um so uh, number one i want to piggyback on what was just said about what we have um my butt was in back before covid and you know five years ago my butt was in a chair every time there was a class and my husband joined our team you know <laughs> uh, really full-time a couple of years ago and he was just doing part-time and he didn't have the opportunity or didn't take advantage of the opportunity to have his butt in a chair every time. And so now we're, we're busy and, and a lot of it is his, well, he just tells me over and over how happy he is that he can come to me and I'll have the answers. And the reason I have the answers is because my butt was in a chair every opportunity. And I hear Debbie in my head, <laughs> <laughs> all, all the time and um in the uh another uh another gratitude is i picked up the phone last file like i think november from a gentleman that has an investment with a, an investment company and you know a lot of those are looking for something well turns out this gentleman's wife is a kw agent out of the dtc and He's not allowed per their guidelines to give her any referral business because it would be considered a conflict of interest because he would gain money from that into there. So he was looking for an agent or an, you know, small agent team to partner with. So he interviewed me. We just had an interview where Mark and I just sat down with him via Zoom the, uh, Monday and we're now his referral partner That's a win. and and he said a lot of people just hung up on him didn't even let him get out what he was looking for they wow. just just said who he was and who he was with and people got off the phone with him and right. because I was nice mm -hmm. we think you're amazing you're showing up at 80 percent right you don't want to mm -hmm. you don't want. anybody else have anything they want to share real quick sure Oh, you can go first, Jody. Go ahead. I just, um, I wanted to, this is a gratitude, not necessarily internally, but it's something that I wish I would have known as a young agent. Um, this is my 17th year, and I don't know that I really learned this truly until probably my 10th or 11th year, but um, you guys probably saw the picture I posted of the charcuterie um boxes that I was delivering last night. And those were truly just verbal referrals. Um, at the time that those referrals close, I will reward them or gift, you know, them at a different level. But um, I just wanted to like share that the two families that just gave me additional referrals, I counted this morning the two combined have given me $10 million worth of business. And that, what I wanted to share was in real estate, it's so easy to feel like, oh, if we call somebody and they don't need help in real estate, just hang up, we're bugging them. We don't need to keep calling them and staying in contact. And that 10 million spread, I think over probably five years, but that's me helping their mom and dad. That's me helping their sister. That's me helping incoming friends um, or employees. And 
all I do is love on my people. I'm not a pushy salesperson. I do random gifts for different things. I pay attention to what's going on Facebook and I just truly stay in contact with them. And honestly, if you wanted to put it, it just socially. And then I do have my mailers that go out and I've always done handwritten notes, but I mean, that was free business that I didn't really have to work for except for to be kind to somebody and pay attention. So anyway, I'm grateful for it. This one of them, um, the one referral to the dad is actually going to be a uh, two listings and a buy now because in the middle of it, the dad had a diabetic uh, seizure. So now one of the other sisters needs to sell her house and move in all three together. So that also, and it might even be more than 10 million, but all that to say, love on your people. Don't give up. It's not one and done. It might take years, but I promise you it pays out tenfold. Sure does. Yeah. That's how I built my business too, just like you, Jody. I'm saying thank you when the referral comes in, not waiting until it closes. Yeah. You're rewarding that action, right? And yeah. it's amazing what comes back. And uh, it's tenfold. tenfold. Yeah. But Bud's another one that does that that's just amazing at that. So thank you, Jody. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Josh, did you have something? Sure. <laughs> I'm just grateful for this community. It's, oh, I'm on the big screen. <laughs> uh, love, 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 love. Hey. <laughs> if you didn't ask Sally yet, we could tell you if you have lettuce in your teeth now. You're like, over here. <laughs> there you <yeah>. go. <laughs> no, I'm grateful for this community. Coming from New Jersey, um, I would always get the, oh, wow, you're so nice. You don't see many people like that anymore. I'm like, yeah, well. It's true because people are so ultra competitive and there's definitely a place for that. But here coming to a brand new area, starting something completely new, you know, my head was spinning, just trying to figure out how I'm going to do these classes, how I'm going to build my database, all that good stuff. And every single person that I've reached out in this community has been so genuine and helpful and honest and literally anything that I would need, they were at the drop of a hat, they would do that for me. And it's nice to be around like-minded people like that. And I appreciate all of you. And I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Culture is everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Is there anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. I mean, if we filled a whole hour of gratitude, how awesome would that be? Can I give a uh, shout out to Mr. Bud Doyle? Yes. Um, I'm brand new too, Josh. And Josh, I have some Jersey roots too, South Jersey, Philly area. But awesome. I'm North Jersey. <laughs> All right. Like a okay. <laughs> but um, Josh and I both kind of reached out on like we're paid up to your Facebook page and um, Mr. Bud Doyle reached out back to both of us offering he spent like an hour when I was going to his application encouraging me and giving me some tips and um, so I'm really grateful for that. Awesome. Thank you, Bud. That's how I remember when Bud was brand new in this office. And I uh, watched that guy pound phones and pound phones every single day. I, it, when I walked in the office, I knew he was going to be there, and Bud was one of them every time. So, and it pays off, doesn't it, Bud? Yep, yep. <coughs> Is anybody else up, up there yes, on um, Zoom? Danielle. So, I just really wanted to thank Debbie. Um, she's always there for us on a personal and a business level, no matter what. And I couldn't be more appreciative of that. And also Bud, Bud's just amazing. He's there for everybody. So we just got to give a shout out to him because he's amazing too. So thank all of you for, for always stepping in and helping out and giving advice because I think we are truly a great family community here. I agree 100%. We need to send Bug a bit, Bug, Bud a big old virtual hug, I think, right? There you go, Bud. All yours. Well, that's why we're going to do what we're doing today. So um, I got the opportunity to meet with the ALC over our last week for their first ALC meeting. And because um, Patrick was off, you know, busy having babies and stuff. She's really cute, by the way. She's adorable. I got to hold her Friday. Um, just saying. Um, they wanted to get more collaborative again in our team meetings, more masterminds, 
last I got a brand new listing. If it's in, if it's in the coming soon status, all of that, it shows up in the MLS. So here's the thing to do. If you want to put it in the chat, put it in the chat box and put the address, put the information in there and also your buyer needs. So put your buyer needs in there. So people aren't going, oh, would you repeat that? Somebody can go back and grab this off the recording and Victoria will put, she also saves the chat and that gets saved in there as well. So let's streamline that a little bit and make this meeting more full of meat and less of just other stuff. Coffee, coffee. coffee. yeah. So yeah. last night um, I put out on, and we'll get to the recognition stuff here uh, towards the end, but last night, um, on our Facebook page, I put out what we wanted to talk about today. And this came from all of you guys, from the ALC and from Special Forces. How do we write offers for our buyers that have the best chance of success in a multiple offer situation? Or maybe you're the only one. They finally see that, they see an offer come through and they're like, oh my gosh, even if there were 10 others, I would still take this offer. How do we write offers like that? What have you done that's successful? And what have you done that didn't work so well? So I want everybody to mastermind in this. We didn't do breakout rooms or anything like that. I want you all to take yourselves off of mute. There's some stellar buyers, agent, contract writing gurus on this screen and in this room. And I want you guys to share some things and I also want to bring Henry into, um, and I'll bring you up to talk about movement mortgage before we're done. So I want to get into that group. We all, the energy is good. Let's get into the mastermind piece. <clears throat> Who wants to go first? What's, what's the things that you do to write amazing offers? Cindy. So I think the most critical thing is reaching out to the listing agent and really having a conversation. And if they try to say, oh, I can't really tell you, just just keep nudging a little bit. Say, well, here's the thing I don't understand, guys. Why is it not in the seller's best interest to let somebody know what you have to be? Is that not in the seller's best interest? That is. It is a check mark. We can get the seller's permission. And it's being truthful to everybody. So everybody doesn't have to wonder and we're all being better for our clients. Well, that's the first thing I would have to say. And then just talk with the listing agent and ask what is important to the seller. Don't assume it's price. I'm seeing 60 day post occupancy, which is the max we can do for free. Now, usually they're not needing that much time, but if you give it, instead of 30 days, you give 60, that can go, yeah. And it, it's the appraisals, it's the appraisal gaps. If you don't, if you don't talk with your buyer and make them understand, and I'm, I've been scripting with some people across the country about how to present that better to my buyer, because they don't, it's just extra on the down. It's not, they're giving up money or whatever. So explaining that. And then finally, and I know Henry will account for this, is get your lender to call the listing agent after you send the offer. If it's a Saturday or a Sunday, even better, you'll impress them and you might get it over somebody else. And get your people out of quick and loan. <laughs> Those big box, they won't win. They'll be, they'll be thrown out immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to get in front of them. Those are tough to close. They do close, obviously. Some, a lot of them do, but boy, they're, they're tough. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna win again. They're tough. Henry, thank you, Cindy. Yeah, I'll go next just because she brought up the lending side of it and uh, it's kind of a, you know, I think in the past it really didn't matter, but now it's really more important now because a lot of the listing agents that I talk to, like you said, if I call on a Saturday at like eight o'clock at night, or if I call on a Sunday at like one o'clock in the afternoon, they're like, oh, you're working today? Um, you know, and so that's one thing is that I think they feel better about because what they're really trying to assess is who's going to be the best client for my client, right? And if your client is has a lender that's on the ball that's calling them at weird times of the weekend, they know, okay, well, at least this person's going to be great for communication. A couple of things that I tell them when I talk to them, the quick and loan thing is one of the things that I talk about. I don't say quick and loans, what I say is we're a local mortgage company here in Highland Branch. 
all of my dot drawing, closing, funding, underwriting processing is done here locally on site. And I always hear them go, oh, that's good. Because they want to know that they can pick up the phone and call someone. They don't have to worry about them being two hours ahead of East Coast time. And they also know that we're here local. So that goes a long way. Uh, so even if it's not me that's your lender, I would recommend that you tell your lender, make sure that you tell them that they're local if they can. Uh, the other thing on the seller side uh, or on the buyer side, um, short clothes. So we technically right now are running 17 day from contract to close uh, for us to get things done, but we can go as low as 15 days. So if we do need to get a loan done in 15 days, that is something that you can ask me about. Uh, unless it's something that's just super, super crazy, I'm gonna probably tell you yes. That's one of the things that you can offer. The rent back obviously is another thing that you can offer, and you are correct. It is 60 days from days of close, but they have to take occupancy of the home. So if they close on March 1st, then I would say by May 1st, they've got to take occupancy of that home, or at least it has to be in the contract. Uh, what you guys do on your time outside of the contract your business. <laughs> so um, a couple other things I learned uh, from some cool gurus uh, for the buyers, pay for their exit queen for the seller. Um, that's another big one that I've seen go over very, very well. Uh, hey, you know what? We'll put in the contract that we're going to pay for your cleaning once you move out everything. We'll pay for it as the buyer. So it's just one of those little things that people just don't think about. Uh, and then obviously waive the inspection and waive the appraisal. Uh, or the appraisal gap, just make sure that you have that guarantee. And then on the inspection, this kind of goes both ways. On the sellers right now, one of the things that I've seen them do is they get a free inspection, and some of them are actually sending that uh, to any of the contracts that come in and say, hey, this is the inspection report. Here's what we're willing to do. This saves everybody time. Yep. Now, we don't get in there, and now you find out that you got this, this, and this, and the buyer wants it, wants all this stuff done. And we all know in this market right now, the buyers aren't getting much done anyway. But at least they can go into this knowing what things need to be done and what things they're willing to say, okay, we're not worried about that and what things they are. So that has been a big thing, a big seller for my uh, sellers is to get a free inspection done and send that to any of the borrowers that are submitting these 11 to 17 contracts. Yeah. And that way you know the person that you have is already on board for what things that they may find. Why not, and why not negotiate? those repairs up front when they're still on the fence. Exactly. <laughs> they're going to give up a lot more as a buyer probably to right. in order to be, you know, that's representing your seller well. I like right. that. Well, one thing that's yeah. worked for me as far as the inspection is we say we'll only ask for health and safety over 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. So even if the radar comes in, which is a big thing, mm -hmm. then the seller doesn't have to worry about it. That gives them a lot of right. Right. Yeah, feeling like you're completely leaving your buyer flapping in the wind. Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. So, yeah, termination yeah. can need to leave in place, right? If it, an inspection termination, always encourage your buyer to still go in and do the inspection, right? And if you're the listing agent and they pulled that out, I would I would counter that back that no, we want you to do an inspection. Right. And we want right. you to have termination rights. Objection is easy to waive it with parameters around it, right? Protect your buyer from remember who you're working for. And then just always remember on the appraisal health and safety, like we talked about earlier, health and safety will still stop the loan. Yeah. Doesn't matter if the borrower says, I don't care. Doesn't matter if the seller says, I'm not paying for it. If on the appraisal, it says subject to, the lender will shut that loan down. You, you, you won't have any choice in that. So uh, just remember that when we are doing appraisal gaps, things of that nature, if there is a safety or health issue, it still has to go back to the lender. The lender will still require those things to be paid. So you may want to put something in the front of your contract to say if there's any health and safety that the seller or that the buyer is willing to pay up to a certain amount to secure those things uh, so that we can get it passed the appraisal. So something else you want to keep in mind on the lending side. But those are the little things that have been uh, working for a lot of my clients that I've been working with. And like I said, Saturday and Sunday, listing yeah. agent calls, probably the number one thing that has secured us. One last thing, uh, I do always ask how many offers they have. If we're the highest offer, where are we in the mix? About 50% of the time, they'll tell me. And I, I don't know, some of you that I've worked with in this office, uh, I'll call you back and they'll say, all right, well, you're number two. 
Um, you're about $10,000 away. Uh, you may want to talk to the client and see if they're willing to go up. So I do ask those questions to the listing agent because I want you to win just like you want to win. Because yeah. we all we all benefit from it. So yeah. uh, I'm trying to be your co-pilot to make sure that we can get as much done as possible. Yeah, that's awesome. If people forget in the contract, in the purchase contract, that there is a lender objection, right? On condition of that property. And it's also in there. Nobody fills in blanks on anything. So that paragraph tends to get looked over. So the lenders can do that. So that sounds like a whole class right there. <laughs> so um, what else? What else is working? On, you guys out in Zoom land. But you're on. Um, hey, hey, Debbie, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I went through this about a month ago on a listing in Highlands Ranch, and I'll go through it. I have a new one coming on tomorrow in that kind of sweet spot of sort of 495 ish. Um, I think it's really important um, as a listing or, you know, as as a buyer agent or for somebody who's going to be reviewing most likely multiple offers on Monday is you got to put your money where your mouth is. Um, you know, and I, I tell my clients this when I'm on the buy side too. Anybody can write an offer for any amount, you know, I mean, it could be a $500,000 house and somebody could offer 600, but it doesn't mean anything if there's no, and I think a couple of people have spoken about sort of appraisal gap coverage that basically the buyer is willing to be like, Hey, I'm willing to, and there's language that, that, you know, Debbie can help with, or a handful of us can help you with in terms of writing what that looks like to protect everybody. But, you know, it just, it, you gotta, you gotta show that you're serious about it. Um, if you're writing an offer and you know, I mean, most are going to be multiple offer. So it's like, how the heck do I win here? You gotta tell your clients like, listen, I know, I get it. You don't want to spend 480 for a house that's 450, but here's the reality. You're not going to get your house. I mean, you know, I, I, uh, this listing tomorrow, there's one active house for sale in all of Highlands Ranch between 475 and 525, and we're hitting the market tomorrow at 495. We're going to go through the weekend. You know, there'll probably be 40 showings. But to win, what I'm looking for, or what, and I'm sure other listing agents will agree, you just, you got to, you got to be able to show that you're serious about it. And, you know, post-closing, I mean, just whatever you can do to win, but, you know, talk is cheap. And unless you put that, I mean, people be like, well, bud, you know, we went, you know, we went off list price. I'm like, you know, you're like seventh. You're in seventh place right now. And that's just right, wrong, or indifferent. That's the market that we're in. So that's the only probably maybe advice I would have. And uh, um, in terms of trying to help people who are representing buyers to be able to, to win the offer. Yeah. And, and to your point too, we, in the clause manual, there is a low appraisal clause in there for the buyer. And there's also one in there for the seller. So depending on which side you're representing, those are already written. Fill the, fill the couple blanks in that are in there. And, you know, those are, they're like, they have some teeth on them, you know? So, they're really good to use, but it's in the clause manual. So you want to make sure that you're familiar with the things that are in the clause manual. Good Debbie, Thank you, bud. Debbie, I've got one, uh, one other, one small suggestion that has suited me well, because I jumped in in a market almost like this, where there were 20 offers on every property. And one of the things that did me well was clean contracts. I had my offers accepted, even if it wasn't the highest with a clean contract, the listing agent knew that I would do my job. If you write a sloppy contract, they think you're going to be difficult to work with, or they're going to have to do their job and your job as well. So yep. your butt in a contract class chair, you aren't clear on everything. I see a lot of those contracts come through and I'm like, oh, somebody should either take them by the scruff of their neck or hug them in and help them out because go, go ahead and put a spreadsheet, a net spreadsheet for the seller. Go ahead and like 
include everything in the same attachment. So whenever they open something, they're not an open 15 attachment. So those things like are so small, but it's, it makes such a difference. And build rapport, just like you build with your clients, build it with this other agent. Because yeah. if they want to work with you and they think you're going to be a good person to work with, they're going to be like, hey, you're a little low. Okay, thanks. Well, when you're looking yeah. at a ton of offers, because we just went through that, and it's just like, the clean offers is massive. You have to have a clean offer. I can't tell you when we're going through it. I'm like, you couldn't even fill the whole thing out. <laughs> I'm like, what? Get it together. It's annoying. And you have to watch how you're talking to people when you call them, too. Because I make notes, and I'm like, this guy was a jerk when exactly. he called. And I'm like, do you really think I'm going to want to work with you or tell you, hey, you should bump up your thing? Like, no. I'm you're out. With you. <laughs> yeah. There are lots of realtors, agents out there that uh, I put them in the Jack Down Street clubs. Uh, there's, there's a whole hustle of them out there. Don't be one. Don't be one. Oh, Cindy. Right. <laughs> it is amazing how people are so rude and you're like, really? But I was, one more thing I was going to say is, um, and I, I like to highlight the highlights in the email that I sent with the offer. I'll say some highlights and I'll say double double um, earnest money is another way. Absolutely, yes. Um, so I'll say double earnest money, appraisal gap, lender will be calling you, what, 15 over, whatever it is. And I always, I always am playful. I'm like, and you're going to love working with me too. Like, I yeah. want to be fun and playful. Because yeah. I've, I've gotten I deals like, because yeah. I've had agent in their office that I knew that I said call and give me a you know so here my point is it pays to be nice because this is actually a small town even though it's huge the number of producing agents is a small number and if you're nice Mo Anderson always says be the best co-op agent you can be yeah because it'll pay off yeah always and doing that appraisal gap I had a lot of people that didn't put an appraisal gap at all and it's like you might want to have that and they're like no, I'm sure it'll freeze. I'm like, you're going like 30,000 above. It's not. Like, you just knocked yourself out of the thing if you don't add it. People are like, eh, I'm pretty sure. Or it's like they had an escalation clause up to almost $75,000 over asking. Oh, and geez. it was an FHA loan. I'm like, <laughs> um, if you have that much money, you can do a conventional. And I'm like, how much money does your person have? They're like, an extra 2,500. And I'm like, what are you doing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. And so it's also being knowledgeable and going to your contracts classes so and you know listening to things going on so you know like well that's bs like yeah. you just knocked yourself out yeah and so you need to have clean contracts you need to be adding in appraisal gaps and you know we don't waive inspection unless we bring an inspector with us to our showing um but putting in the verbiage of the things that we would have only asked for anyway of the health and safety or things above an X amount, but other people aren't writing that. So it automatically gives you another yeah. check. check in the wrong column. Well, if you say, I want these, then it makes you, they're like, oh, well, these other people didn't say that. Yeah. Even if they would. Even if they, that's not. what they would do, they didn't say it. So it makes a difference. Yeah. And tightening up your dates and calling your letter before you put in dates that have to do with them. Like, being smart and out of all those offers, only one lender called me. See, yeah. it's not hard to be better. Yeah, and cash, and that's that, great. Yeah, and cash is always key when you're no, putting cash offers. That's right. Cash like, way faster than the cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. unless it's the cash. Yeah, yeah. they don't want to get. <laughs> yeah, that's something that we need to educate our sellers because sellers are so programmed to think cash is better, cash is better. Yeah, I'll tell you what, but right. at the end of the day, it's the money in your pocket that you want, yeah. it's the cash in your pocket. Well, my agents yeah. that put in cash offers, they're like, well, and it's cash. And I'm like, good for you. And you're yeah. fine. <laughs> and I'm like, but you still don't get to come under just because you're cash. Like, get it together. Yeah. Hang on in the room just a sec. Anybody else on mine want to jump in? Because you're behind me and I can't see your hands going up. Hey, uh, Debbie. Okay. Uh, to just piggyback off of um, Bud and a few people in the room, what they were saying, too. Um, kind of, and I know this doesn't necessarily help kind of the younger buyers or first time buyers, but just um, with those multiple offers, one thing that I, in the last year probably have been doing is I literally pick the agent I want to work with 
and then see if they can match the best contract. Whereas I think we're naturally driven to the best contract. And the one I just closed on, um, it actually was the fourth in line. And I just called and said, I have appreciated your conversation, your attentiveness, your contract. Could you rise to this level? And I mean, it was a list price of 467 and all the offers that I was talking to were at 500,000. That's a big gap. And it was a VA, he was putting down 20% and still guaranteed a $33,000 uh, appraisal deficit. And I promise you, I just like that agent. So I thought I'd ask the question. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'll it was strong. List. Yeah, we all keep that list in the back of our mind, right? And I've had sellers go, do you know any of these agents? How are they to work with? Yeah. And when you teach your buyers to look at the same thing before even looking at properties, it makes a difference. Yeah. I've had and there's lenders that I won't work with also. I mean, yeah. knowing who their lender is, I've been burned by a few different lenders in the past to know who their lender is. If they have introdu introduced me to them, communicated, um, you know, that's huge. And yeah. that's not the agent's fault. I get that. I would put that out there if I needed to, but um, when you've got 14 offers to choose from, you definitely want to stand out. That's right. That's well, right. And, and Debbie, I, I, to, I want to toss in there um, too, that have a conversation with that agent before you write the offer and find out what best suit that seller. Because yep. sometimes they don't put that information in the MLS and sometimes they either need some time. If you can say, I'll be flexible. If you go, these are the, you know, we're going to put dates in and you know, they want to, that they want to get out of there as quick as they can, you know, be sure and let them know our lender is going to do everything in their power to get this thing closed sooner. You, you know, the dates or by this date, it's not on that date. So we're going to be working hard to close this as soon as we can because you know we're at the mercy of appraisals usually yeah true enough true enough thanks holly you guys marianne um i was just gonna ask this market are you guys seeing um brand 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 new never been one transaction so are you are you seeing um like contingencies where they have to sell their house first and or is that just like you're not getting it you're, you're not getting it <laughs> unless you're anything you're trapped and you, if you're under contract and you've passed inspection and everything else and you've got everything else the offer is strong it may be the one that gets chosen and look into homeward there's a program yeah. that the office allows where your, it allows your buyers to be cash buyers let's take one more Cindy. Mm -hmm. let's do this one last comment then we'll get to the rest of our stuff i just wanted to say one more thing more on the probably on the listing side listing agents we talked about cash is a king and Usually it's cash, uh, conventional, FHA, and then VAs at the bottom. And that drives me nuts because these people served our country. Yeah. And I know Henry will back me up on this. They can close just as fast now. Yes? Yes. And they Faster have the now. lowest rate of foreclosure. Yep. And they have the highest credit. Yep. So VA loans should go to the top of the list. Yeah, I agree 100%. And they have the most buying power because the rates are the lowest. Exactly. Yep. And they have the most buying power. There's a great piece of information to share out with on online. You looking for a video to do? Boom, right there. Star on your forehead. Yeah. So let's go to the one last question. Let's do this one fairly quick. I think it'll go faster than the other one. You guys have awesome ideas. I love it. So put on your seller agent hat. So as a seller, what do you hear from sellers that other than price, are going, that offer is really attractive because fill in the blank. Waving appraisal. Waving appraisal. If you can. Putting in an appraisal gap. Appraisal and gap. actually having the cash. Um, inspection, like doing that kind of stuff. Um, like putting in some sort of notes about inspection. Um, and call in first. Mm -hmm. Getting calls first and being like, what do your clients want and when are you looking at offers? Yeah. And actually, many times that yeah. agents are going, oh, okay. offers just landed in my inbox and I didn't even know they were coming. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they're like, turn around for three hours. And I'm like, don't be a bully. 
<laughs> so you want to be right back because you're going to be out. Yeah. You're so on that out. note, how long do people stay? Like how long? Well, right now we're doing it because so I've been telling everybody, I'm like, we put our listings in the MLS active on Wednesday with showing starting on Friday. And then we'll review either Sunday night or Monday. Um, and so because right now you can't overlap showings. And so you have such small windows <clears> and there you need to be able to have time for everybody to go. Yeah. So we give it the whole weekend. But then do you give your this is probably like too technical concession and stuff, but do they you present that each offer as it comes in? No, we do it all at once. That's too much. Okay. They, with your sellers, they are typically not gonna remember everything that you did. So we're creating spreadsheets okay. and taking all the offers with us, but using the spreadsheets to go over the details that matter. Yeah. Like the meat. They're of not it. at home at the moment either. Remember? With all the showing, they might as well go scan for the weekend. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just tell all other agents, I'm like, they're not even reachable. They're out of town and they're not usually, but I'm like, they're not even here. I can't reach them. Yeah. Go so, back to what your seller wants. So wrong. when those people say you have 24 hours and you just get back, Say like, I'm just like, like we're not going to be reviewing. So if you want it to be considered, you have to put it out. You're not the boss. That's why, that's why <laughs> you call the list. The buyers aren't the boss. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the situation this past weekend, where it was booked for showing for the whole weekend, we had like 74 shows. Yeah. To that, they went on the contract Friday night, which you know the seller can accept. Yeah, so, yeah, I know that's what's hard with the. But it's hard with the guys. Like everything for the weekend. Yeah, we had a lot of people book times just to book times because it came up and then sent it to their client to look at it online. And then they're like, oh, never mind. Yeah. And then they canceled the time. But it's, yeah. it's so crazy. 15 minute showing windows are a challenge. They really are. Yeah. They are. So, that, yeah, which makes it really tough to schedule on Saturday. Yeah. You can try to. You, 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 you might, if you can, if it's the opportunity, you might do two showings back to back. Time. Hey, uh, Debbie. Yes, Scott. The, I just wanted to highlight, and I guess it'd go back to the buyer side, but something Kristen just said, just kind of reiterate. Right now, it's so hard to get showings. I know a lot of people were all challenged with that when because they only have so many 15-minute <clears throat> windows over the course of a weekend. But that's exactly what I, I start doing is book. As soon as I see a listing, I think that my client might like, I just go book showings. And then you can always cancel them. But if you, like I think Kristen said, if you wait for them to look at it online and tell you if they want to see it or not, it's already full a lot of times. Yeah. Well, and how many of you all, and here's special forces started sharing buyer needs with each other, right? So they've got a list of people that they're all looking for and helping each other with. If it's not, if it doesn't work for your buyer, that one particular, it's going to work for somebody else. And, you know, maybe a phone call to one of your office mates. Hey, I just saw this. Don't know if you saw it yet. Special forces doing that for each other. So it's a good thing. It's a good so, thing. Yeah. Debbie, I, I want to share a, uh, just an interesting event that I had occur with, a, with actually, I was the buyer's agent. But the seller did the showings, and they were going to accept offers and make a determination on Monday. And they were expecting a multiple offer situation. And we hadn't sent ours in. We had written one up, but we, they, my clients hadn't even signed it. We just kind of waited it out because we didn't want to be first offer on the table. And she started calling me on Sunday asking, um, are you going to send that offer in? Yeah, my client, you know, I'll get them to sign it. I'll get it over to you. They've been kind of tied up. And, um, and I said, do you have any, you know, have you gotten any offers? She's like, no, I have, you know, five people that have said they're sending me offers and I haven't gotten any. And by about three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, she still hadn't had any offers or heard from any other agents. So I called my buyer, we lowered our offer and we put a deadline of nine o'clock on Sunday night and sent the, and I said, I just sent you the offer. And I said, you know, you don't have any other offers. So since you, you know, haven't heard from anybody, we would like an answer tonight. So we negotiated back and forth, went under contract. The next morning I was in bold. And during the first break of bold, the agent had called me 
and and said, well, you did an amazing job. And she praised me in front of my clients. She got two offers the next morning from agents. Both of them were higher. One of them was a cash offer, $30,000 higher than we were under contract for. Yep. But they never called the listing agent. Nope. Um, it could work against you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Good stuff. One so, last comment. <clears throat> on the listing side, obviously we tell our clients just leave for the weekend, go to the mountains, have fun. Um, the, the whole, and I kind of, I guess maybe Debbie, I'd like your opinion or anybody else's opinion. Um, I think everybody, every, a 15 minute window is virtually impossible to hit. Yeah. If you have multiple showings, even if you don't, because you have to sit there and wait for whoever's in there to get out. And I, I think just go ahead and leave it like out, you know, half an hour, an hour even, and allow multiple showings in that hour and just put crystal clear, do not pass keys, do not overlap because I, I noticed that agents are being very respectful of that and they're making you show the lockbox code before they'll give you the key or they'll put it back in. And it's that whole 15 minute window, that's the math isn't there. You're not going to get everybody in. And people, people are going like, if you want to see it Saturday, people are getting the lockbox for a Sunday showing and going on Saturday. Also, why electronic lockboxes? Yeah. I had one on Saturday that was a million dollar house. Okay. So that's, that's really you can't fun. even walk through the property. That's telling a buyer, okay, we give you four minutes. It's a million bucks to move on. That's not the yeah. yeah. reality. Yeah, you can't do 15 minutes in a row. I had a couple that did that, and I even did it when I was showing it. They're not available. Well, yeah, well, if it is, that's what we're doing. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Have those conversations with your sellers, right? And have them walk in the buyer's shoes a little bit. So, you guys want to know who um, who got our excellence awards for December? What? Well, let's talk about it. So, the number three individual for December with uh, closed eight hundred nine thousand nine hundred fifty dollars in sales volume is Josh Saxton. Woo! Woo noise online there so take your take your <coughs> self off mute be hooting and hollering and your neighbors will wonder what the heck you're doing <laughs> number two jesse lou with uh she closed two units one million eighty three thousand dollars in sales volume congratulations jesse oh. and so you should like count on the table for for December, closed 1,105,000, two units, but Doyle. Yeah. All right, for um, teams, the number three uh, with the closed volume of 1,465,000, three closed units, the Duncan Group, Shannon. Yeah. And number two, with 1,715,490 in sales volume, they closed seven units. Jody Walco, the Alliance hey. team, way to go. How do you close seven units and not be number one? Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. So number one, the number one team is, uh, they closed 5,975,000 in volume. Close 13 units. One home Colorado, Steve Nickerson's team. We got All right. And then the heavy hitter award goes to, uh, you guys know what that is, right? It's the most number of listings taken in a month. And that goes to the Jarnigan team, Rex Jarnigan's team. Three new listings for $1,450,000 in volume. Awesome job. One more thing. So we got profit share as well. So you guys should already know that you got this in your bank. Um, so you can come up and grab these. Uh, Cindy Carpery, you got profit share. Kristen Connor, I'm not gonna say what they are. Kristen Connor got profit share. Patricia Connor got profit share. Sue Connor got profit share. 
John Eno has one, two, three pages of profit share. Jamie Goldman, uh, she's in the ladies' room. That, that's a Christina Lottie, right? You get another word and you're not there. Um, and Renee Helton has two pages of profit share. Rex Jern again. William Kretzer. Not by Yellowman. <laughs> Brian Lawson has profit share. Holly Mays, Holly. And Mark Mays. Marsha McCorkle oh, and Doug Osnes. <laughs> I did too, but I didn't remember that. So really fast. The next thing that's, that's coming up is family reunion. And we talked about it a little bit this morning in Special Forces and why you should go, especially this year. Um, with all the changes and all the things that everybody went through last year, Gary does the most amazing job with uh, his vision speech and the state of the company. And if you've never had the opportunity to hear it, it's worth $119 to get your ticket for family reunion. We usually spend about 3,000 a person to go. 119 bucks. And I will personally make you a guarantee, all of you, even you guys online or Zoomies, I'll write you the check back if you if you go, you do, you watch the vision speech, you watch State of the Company, and you go to some of the breakout sessions, which the schedule is out, it's pretty cool. If you didn't find a single shred of value in it, I'll personally write your check back to you. I don't lose money very often. <laughs> So make sure you sign up. That price is only good through the 29th. And they'll send you the link for everything. You can go in. There's a lot of classes that if we were doing this in person, that even if you left a class early, ran to the other side of the convention hall, got in line, the fire marshal would stop. What happened to me, I'd be like five people in front of me and they'd stop. I'm like, ah, you try to sneak in. They have to. <laughs> That doesn't happen online. <clears throat> Plus you get the recorded sessions afterwards. Um, you will find there, there's just a huge menu of things to help you build your business. And um, if you want to get better at something, you want to get into mastery or something, go pick a couple of those classes to plug into. And definitely don't miss vision speech. Don't miss state of the company. Watch and see what Keller Williams did last year in the middle of a pandemic. You're going to be really amazed and surprised and proud of where you work. So get that ticket, jump online if you need help with it. Um, just follow you, go to KW Connect and it's floating on that top page. Click on events and it'll take you right there. You can sign up. Super easy. Um, Matt, talk about that. that. You gotta come up here so y'all can see me too. Okay, so I'm Madison Peeler. For those of you who don't know me, I am in charge of the culture committee this year. And one of the things we're doing that they do every year is the uh, Super Bowl squares. So Victoria is gonna have this at the front desk and $2 cash per square. We will let you know half of the winner, half the money goes to the winners, half of the money goes to KW Cares. So bring your money. Thanks, and let me know if you want to be on culture committee. Yay! Yay. You should bring a two dollar bill. <laughs> oh, we'll give you double five. Right? We'll double five for the two dollar bill. Henry. Yes. You want to pop up sure. real quick and take the last couple minutes? I can do that. Come on. Hello, everybody on Zoom land. Uh, again, I'm Henry Russell, and uh, I run the cash team, and uh, we do try to make cash cake. Just so everyone wins. <laughs> so we got a couple of things I want to talk to you about today. Uh, the number one thing is rates, right? So, you know, what are rates going to do? We've all heard the rumor mill that rates are going to go up. Uh, now I talk to clients about uh, getting them locked in. They say, they always ask the same question. Are oh, rates going up? Are your rates going up? Is that, yeah. So just so you know, the economic indicators right now showcase that rates are going to stay stable or about where they are now. So within an eighth of a point for at least the next six months. 
So if you have those clients that are on the fence that are saying, hey, I want to buy something in the summer, you may want to put that little piece of information in their ear. Now, obviously, I can't guarantee your rates are going to go up in June or July. Uh, that's just what the economic indicators showcase. And we are basically preparing for that. Um, we can look at this by the amount of applications that we take for purchases and refinances. These are some of the indicators that we utilize to understand where the market is trending. Now, obviously, Colorado is a little bit different because we don't have any inventory. So we are automatically going to go down as far as how many purchase applications we take because people are not able to find homes. Uh, as of right now, my team has over 31 people pre-approved for a home that cannot find homes. So yes. there, yes, yes, yes. So uh, there is a lot of that going on. So that is kind of uh, making the numbers fluctuate a little bit. But uh, most people just say to me all the time, hey, what's a 30 year fixed rate? What's a 15 year fixed rate? So I'll just give you some numbers right now. Now, obviously I can't tell you this is gonna work for everyone. This is with a 760 FICO. They're at least 20% equity in the house. Uh, they uh, wear red lipstick. <laughs> Okay, uh, if they manage all those three things uh, on a 30 year fixed rate, 2.75. On a 15 year rate, 2.25. On a 10 year rate, 2.25. On a 20 year rate, 2.875. For some reason, the 20 year is higher than the 30. The reason for that is that investors don't love 20 year rates. I don't know why they don't love them. They just don't love them. I guarantee they don't love them because people get out of the fashion. Yeah. That's probably why. So uh, those are your numbers. If someone asks you, hey, what are rates doing today? Where are they at? Da, da, da. You know, obviously you guys can't quote rates because you're not a licensed performance professional. However, you can say, well, I was talking to my lender and he said that rates are around this. Obviously, don't guarantee those rates, but those are just some things that you can utilize because that's a question I get all the time. I'm sure you probably get that question in your travels also from family members, friends, and uh, new people. Uh, last but not least, one of the things that we talked about earlier today was what are the things that we can do to win deals? One of those things that we can always do is shorter close time, right? Uh, I heard someone talk about homework, is it homework? Mm -hmm. that gives you a cash offer. Uh, just so you know, if you use homework, I can still do the loan after that. So uh, please don't think of that as, oh, I'm cutting Henry out of the deal or uh, I'm cutting my, my lender out of the deal, whoever you utilize homework you can use and you can still use your other lender. So please don't feel like you're doing uh, anyone else at the service of that. The other thing is, is that if we have to, we can close the deal in 15 days. So when I say that, I mean, me, Henry Russell Cash Team, I don't know about your lender, but I know that I can close the deal in 15 days. Uh, the reason that I can do that is two blocks from here, my closing, underwriting, funding, dot drawing, all is two blocks away. So if we need to push a deal out, we can push a deal out. So if that is going to be the reason or the, the, the leverage that you need to win a deal, please contact me first before you do that. But 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to tell you, yeah, go ahead and do it. All right. Thank you so much. That was pretty good odds. Yes. <laughs> All right. Just show of hands. So the ALC gets some feedback. What do you think about the format of the team meeting today? Did you find value in it? Did you not? We want to hear the good, the bad, the ugly. We really like the good, but we can only improve if we know about the eh or ugly, right? What do you think? Yes or no? It's good. Yes? Yes? Put in the chat box if you want. Everybody in the room? Value? Awesome. So go put it to use. Otherwise, this was an hour's worth of entertainment. So. Any other questions, uh, bring them back for next Wednesday and let's talk about it. Cool. You guys rock. And you're awesome. One more last thing. Guess in bold, guess uh, special forces is tied for number one in contracts written. If you don't think special forces gold we result works, then you get, go find one of the 15 people that are over their eyeballs in it and doing bold and talk to them. Don't ask me, go ask them. All right, have an awesome day. See you soon. Bye everyone, have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.